Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast. It is my delight to be with you today. Thanks for listening. My Bible is sitting open to the book of Leviticus. We are walking through this book chapter by chapter. I am in chapter 19 today. So if at all possible, reach over, get your own copy of the Word of God. Join me, Leviticus chapter 19. And please get something on which you can jot some notes. Leviticus 19 is one of those chapters here in this book that many believers in our day and age scratch their head and say, why in the world do I need this chapter? Well, I'm going to give you an outline that'll really help you answer that question, not just today, but from here on out. So get that tablet, get something with which you can write, please. I've got a gospel tract in my hand. I'll be talking about it here in just a moment. As a matter of fact, I picked out this gospel tract because we are here in Leviticus chapter 19. So while you get your Bible out, let me lead into our Bible study time this way. I am sure you've heard the saying and probably used the saying, which goes this way, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Now, we have people in other countries who uh, listen, and English is not their first language, and every language has some little strange sayings in it. I want to explain what this saying really means. When we say don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, we're meaning this. As you're working to eliminate things that are either bad or things that are not useful, be careful that you don't throw away what's really important. Uh, Here's a case in point. I know of a family who received some Christmas cards one year, and when they went to throw away the envelopes and the Christmas cards, they threw away the money that was in them. They threw the baby out with the bathwater. Well, as a matter of fact, they threw about $100 away. Oh, their heart was hurt. Well, again, that's an example of throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Leviticus 19 has some strange rules in it, and these rules were there and designed for the Old Testament Jews, and many of these rules have, frankly, no real application to you and I today, and so many believers actually chuckle at these rules, and they wonder why in the world they are here. They are asking, what was God trying to accomplish in the lives of these Old Testament Israel people? people here by giving them these strange rules. Well, my friend, be careful about throwing out Leviticus 19. Don't throw it out before you find out the baby or the purpose behind Leviticus 19. Get your Bible, get pen and paper. I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago. This radio program is a radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracks Incorporated, and that word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. It refers to a gospel tract, a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. This is our 80th year of publishing gospel tracts in different languages, and we give them away all over the world. The one in my hand right now is I'm keeping the Ten Commandments. I pick this one out because as we walk through and read through much of Leviticus 19, some of the Ten Commandments are there, actually eight of them. And some people think that, well, God gave us the Ten Commandments, they think, so that we would have a way to know if we're getting into heaven or not. If I keep the Ten Commandments, God will like me, he'll let me into heaven. Do you know just the opposite is true? God gave the Ten Commandments to show you why you have no right under God's blue sky to ever get into heaven. You're a sinner. You've broken his law. Oh, but the Ten Commandments were given to us to show us how futile it is for you and I to try to get the sin stain off of our soul 
and make us ready to receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, as a gift of God's grace. Here's a great tool for sharing the gospel. I'm keeping the Ten Commandments. At the end of the program, my announcer will give you our mailing address and our phone number and so on. Please give us your name and mailing address, and we will send the sample packet to you. You can just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.com. Well, if your Bible's open to Leviticus chapter 19, let me begin by reading verses 2, 3, and 4, which say this, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Ye shall fear every man his mother and his father, and keep their, my Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. Turn ye not unto idols, nor make to yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. You see some of the Ten Commandments there, don't you? But now go to verse 18. It says, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, that's the Jewish people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Why? I am the Lord your God. Now, friend, we cannot mention all the various rules listed here in the chapter, but, well, Look at verse 19. If you were to read it, you'd find that they were not to uh, have, they were to have no cross breeding uh, of their cattle, no cross growing of their crops, and no cross sowing of their materials. Now, these three rules do not apply to us today, even though they are wise and proper rules to be followed. Over in verse 27, we find that the Old Testament Jews were not to round the corners of their hair and their beards. Again, we might chuckle at this because, well, these seem so strange. Why these kind of rules? Well, Leviticus chapter 19 has a three-part layout to it. In all, there are 16 distinct paragraphs in the chapter, and each paragraph you know when you've come to the end because the final words are these, I am the Lord your God. It's simple to find them. But these 16 little paragraphs are easily then organized into three basic groups. Here's the outline. Group number one, group number two, and group number three. You got your paper ready? Here we go. Group number one is verses one to 10. My title is Rules About My Private Relationship with God. Rules About My Private Relationship with God. And all these are built upon the one key truth, and that key truth is this. God is holy, so you and I need to be holy. All right, the second part of the chapter, group number two, takes up verses 11 to 18, and here we find the rules about my personal relationship with people, my personal relationship with people, and all of the rules, these four paragraphs here in these verses, are built on what we read there at the end of verse 18, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The final paragraph or grouping of paragraphs, really, here is verses 19 through 37. In all, there are eight paragraphs there, and we lump them together because, well, here's my title. Here we're given rules for my public relationship in society. We've got my private relationship with God, my personal relationship with people, and then my public relationship with society. Now, all right, Leviticus 19 has a number of strange laws. We've said that a couple of times now, these laws which you and I do not have to obey. So then why did the Old Testament Jews have to keep them? What was God trying to accomplish? Well, friend, I'm glad you asked the question. Leviticus 19 stresses the fact that there is, absolutely is, a connection between our relationship to a holy God and our interplay, our interconnection with other people and the broader culture. We are people who are in the world. We're not of the world, but we certainly are in the world. And there's a relationship between our walk with God and our walk in the world. God never allowed back then, nor does he allow now, for there to be a disconnect between our life with Jesus and our life before the world around us. Now, 
Many of these rules which we chuckle about were directed at some action done by the other nations living around the Jews. For instance, if you look at verses 9 and 10, the Jews were not to reap the entire harvest. They were to leave the corners of their fields unharvested. Well, why was this to be done? Well, this would allow the poor to go into the field and earn their own food. Was that uh, food free? Was the food and the harvest free to them? Yes, but by working to get it out of the field, their human dignity was protected. Why is that important? Well, the poor people, just like the rich people, are made in the image of God. Those rules about the Jews cutting their hair had a background to them. The idol-worshiping nations did certain things as part of their worship, and these non-believers shaved their hair, they cut their bodies, they practiced occult prostitution, they consulted mediums, they showed little reverence for their worship buildings. And as these idol-worshippers observed the practices and daily life of the Jews, they would have been struck by this one thought. (laughs) The Jews are different from us. The Jews are not like us. Their God impacts their lives seven days a week and not just on their worship day. Well, I've already mentioned two basic foundational reasons why the Jews ought to live and practice these rules. The first one was found in verses 1 and 2. It was this, God's holy, and because we love him, we desire to be holy also. The second one is this, based upon verse 18. We are to love our neighbor as ourselves. They are made in God's image, and we treat them because they have dignity. They're in the image of God. But there's a third one. It's found near the end of the chapter, verses 33 and 34. Let me read them to you. It says this, If a stranger sojourn with thee in the land, and ye shall not vex him, but the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself. For because ye were strangers in the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God. Because we love Egypt, Even those people who are not like us, we are going to adjust how we live to be distinct from the world to say these things. Our God is different than your God. Our God does greater things in the life and the heart of the people that follow him than your God could ever do. In so many religious groups these days, people change their lives to get holy, to become holy. But you and I, as followers of Jesus Christ, we change our lives because Jesus has made us holy already. Now, we desire to live up to our title because we're called children of God, and we have the Holy Spirit in us to help us live out a life of holiness. So let me ask you, you and I who call ourselves followers of Christ, do you and I desire to live holy? If so, why? So that God will love us? Well, God's been loving us before, since before the foundation of the world. He's not going to stop loving us. But to make us holy, we need the Son of God and his shed blood at Calvary. You and I cannot make ourselves holy by our goodness. Our goodness gets in the way of receiving the free gift of salvation in the Son of God. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.